Hello, cloud gurus, and welcome to another episode of GCP This Month. I'm your host, Matthias Anderson, bringing you the latest announcements on GCP This Month, of course. In this episode's Quick Bytes segment, we'll spin you a tale about the new Spinnaker GCP solution, cover the new Cloud SQL support for SQL Server, and bind it all together with a look at new federated query support from BigQuery to Cloud SQL. After that, we'll dig a little deeper into some key announcements for our GCP Gems segment, including VMware on GCP, better support for BeyondCorp, and a good news, bad news bit about pricing, followed by our GCP Guru of the Month to finish things off. The release of a new Spinnaker for GCP solution now makes it super easy to get a production-ready configuration of Spinnaker running on a new GKE cluster. The Spinnaker for GCP solution includes sample pipelines and apps that demonstrate best practices, so DevOps teams can use these as a great starting point for tailoring them to their company's requirements. Upcoming new virtual machines powered by second-gen AMD EPIC processors will be the largest general-purpose VMs GCP has ever offered. Big compute workloads can leverage full-socket VM sizes that will provide upwards of 60% better platform memory bandwidth than existing instances, and they'll be making them available to Google Cloud customers later this year, in sizes scaling up to 200 virtual CPUs and 1.6 terabytes of RAM. The new general purpose N2 machine types with second gen Xeon scalable processors offer more than 20% price performance improvement for many workloads and support up to 25% more memory per vCPU compared with the first gen N1 machines. These N2 machine types are now available in beta in US Central 1, Europe West 4, and Asia Southeast 1. GCP's memory-optimized instances, the M2 class, get two new huge machine sizes now available in beta. The addition of these 6TB and 12TB options allows SAP customers to run their largest SAP HANA databases on GCP. Google points out that these machine types still support your favorite GCP features like live migration. The new compute-optimized C2 VMs provide the highest performance per core available on Google Cloud, making them a great fit for demanding applications such as high-performance computing, video encoding, and massively multiplayer games. Compute-optimized VMs are now generally available in four regions, with expansion planned in the coming weeks to three more. Cloud Security Scanner, a vulnerability scanner originally only for App Engine, is now generally available for web apps running on GKE and Compute Engine too. Cloud Security Scanner automatically crawls your application to detect a number of common vulnerabilities, including cross-site scripting, flash injection, mixed content, and outdated or insecure libraries. Cloud SQL for Microsoft SQL Server is now available in alpha. This enables users to bring their existing SQL Server workloads to GCP and have them run in Google's fully managed database service, Cloud SQL. BigQuery has already had support for querying non-BigQuery storage systems like Cloud Storage, Cloud Bigtable, and Google Sheets, but Google has now extended this federated query capability to include Cloud SQL. This means you can easily run queries that combine data from both BigQuery tables and Cloud SQL tables without any exporting or importing needed. Now let's head on to our GCP Gems segment. Well, get ready for this. VMware Cloud Foundation is coming to Google Cloud. Google is partnering with CloudSimple, a company founded and run by Guru Pangal, no relation, to offer a new Google Cloud VMware solution by CloudSimple that will allow customers to run VMware vSphere-based workloads in GCP. And of course, given the company name, the idea is to make this transition to Cloud Simple. Cloud Simple says that their offering is 100% compatible with your existing tools, skills, and processes, so customers should be able to leverage all of their existing investment in the VMware ecosystem as they execute on their cloud strategies. Enterprise customers have been asking for Google Cloud support for VMware workloads for a while now, so it's exciting to see this come to fruition. 
This new solution will leverage VMware's Software Defined Data Center SDCC, technologies, including VMware vSphere, NSX, and vSAN software deployed on a platform that's administered by Cloud Simple for GCP. That said, Google will provide the first line of support to make sure that customers have a streamlined product support experience. They plan to work closely with Cloud Simple to ensure that business critical applications are supported with the SLAs that enterprise customers need. The Google Cloud VMware solution by Cloud Simple should be available on the Google Cloud Marketplace later this year. Google has just made generally available an important new feature of Cloud Identity Aware Proxy. IAP now supports context-aware access capability for SSH and RDP to remotely administer machines. Now, IAP has always required that the identity making the connection be authorized, that's the whole point of course, but context awareness means that the connection can also be restricted by things like device security status and location. So you could, for example, disallow any administrative connections made from an unpatched machine. The old way of doing things would be to set up a Bastion host. As an admin, you would first connect to the Bastion and then jump from there to make your connection to the remote machine that you actually wanted to administer. But your Bastion would need to be pretty wide open to incoming connections, and all of your instances would have to trust any connection from the Bastion. But Cloud IAP helps you achieve the Beyond Corp security model, which rethinks network security and moves away from assuming that a network perimeter, such as might include a VPN or Bastion, offers a safe internal network where connections can be trusted. Instead, it applies the security principle of defense in depth and has zero trust. Every connection should be individually verified. So if you protect your SSH and RDP connections by tunneling through Cloud IAP, it's even better than having a whole fleet of differently configured bastions, security-wise I mean. You can enable granular access to specific virtual machines by specific people connecting from approved devices and locations, all without needing to give your VMs any public IP address or having to set up any VPN or Bastion host. This is a way more secure way to do it. Now that brings me to the next announcement where I have some good news and some bad news. So which do you want first? Well, unfortunately, I'm just gonna have to choose for you because this is a video. So let's say that you do set up Cloud IAP and you remove the external IPs from your instances to keep them more secure. Well, you would likely want to use Google's Cloud NAT or Network Address Translation Service so that those instances can still connect out to the internet. Cloud NAT is integrated as a software-defined networking feature of the VPC. So here's the good news. Google is reducing the price that they charge for Cloud NAT in all but a very few cases. The only time you'll pay the same price as before is if you're running at least 32 instances in a region in the USA. All other cases are now cheaper, as Google will both charge the USA's lower data processing price for all regions, and it'll prorate the per hour charge by the actual number of instances that you have connected, if that's less than 32. I hope this will encourage more people to set their systems up more securely. That said, there definitely still are situations that call for giving instances external IP addresses. And this is where we get the bad news. Beginning in April of 2020, Google will start charging an hourly fee for all external IP addresses, not just the unused static ones like before. Now this is not a huge charge relative to most instance prices, about three US dollars per month for normal instances and half that for preemptible ones, but it seems like Google is trying to incentivize people to go with the more secure option when they can. Now this is a very recent announcement, so stay tuned to GCP this month for any future developments. With the end of all of these announcements, let's move on to our final section of the show, Guru of the Month. This month's winner is, and please forgive me if I get this wrong, Ola Lawe Olalai, who is an infrastructure lead based in Nigeria. Congratulations! We'll be sending you a care package containing a t-shirt, some stickers, and a hand-signed card. For all you other gurus who want a special prize package like this, try your luck by answering this month's question, which can be found at this link. Well, that's all we have for this month's GCP releases. We look forward to joining you again next month with some more great GCP announcements. I'm Matthias Anderson, and thanks for watching GCP this month. Keep being awesome, cloud gurus!